Hello and welcome to part 8 of the Jeep tutorial series. This is David Ward. When last I left you we had created the, the tires using the array modifier and then the rims to go inside the tires and then put them on the Jeep itself. Okay, so um, like I said last time we're gonna try to get a little further along maybe um, don't really have that much more things to model so that many more things so hopefully we can maybe get them all done in this section but in any case uh, one thing I want to do right before we finish up is to go ahead and put the bracket around the spare tire here so I'm gonna tab into edit mode of the Jeep itself grab our vertices and we're gonna select one of these little bumpers um, well let's see I guess um, let's go ahead and apply the mirror modifier on our Jeep itself because everything else that we do from this point um, aside from the headlights, but those will be separate pieces that we can just add across there. But uh, once we have the steering wheel and the gauges and everything, those will not be symmetric, so we can go and apply the, mod the mirror modifier for now. Okay, or I say for now, I mean, for, once you apply it, it's a permanent thing, so <laughs> we'll apply the mirror modifier, not just for now, but forever. So anyways, I'm selecting one of those little loops around the back. I'm going to shift D, duplicate that up, and we're going to add it on. Let's look at some reference. Maybe we can get a better idea of uh, how that's that spare tire is connected. Um, so let's just say Willie's Jeep spare tire. And it looks like it had a bracket there. Um, some of these have actual gates and everything. Here we go. That's a good image right there. Okay, so it looks like it's just basically a strap that's strapped on there and basically just a holder for it. So nothing too fancy. Um, we can use what I have here that's already duplicated to scale this up. Maybe drag it out a little bit. And let's go to our rear view, Control One, and it's going to be kind of hard to see. Let's uh, one one of the the one of the watchers suggested to hide the rest of the geometry instead of shift, you know, selecting inverse and hitting H. That works, um, but there's also another easier way. If we have what we have selected, we can hold down Shift H and it'll hide the what's not selected so this that works it's a little faster so that'll that'll be even better so um, okay so let's uh, go ahead and create this holster here let's drag that out there drag this out here oops just want to only select these guys there we go and we'll go ahead and uh, let's uh, extrude let's grab the edge here and I'm gonna extrude down here rotate it about 45 degrees. Let's just do that. Type it out 45 degrees. There we go. And then extrude that. Rotate that 45 degrees so we have a nice 90 degree angle right there. Of course, we'll have to modify this a bit. Okay, and do the same thing on this side. Extrude down a little bit. Rotate it 45 degrees negative 45 degrees I guess in this case scale that oh we'll, we won't scale it yet we'll extrude one more time rotate that negative 45 so we get a nice straight angle there clean this up okay so now I want to attach these two ends so I'm gonna extrude this down on the x-axis to about right there grab this end extrude that down looks like we're not quite even there so let's fix that grab these guys Drag it down there. Okay, so now I'm going to select these guys, scale them on the x-axis 0%, and in a perfect world I could go W remove doubles, but they're not lined up perfectly, so it's therefore not a perfect world. So what we can do is just select where they should be on top of each other, but they're slightly not. We can just select those and it selects both of them. We can hit Alt-M to merge them at their center and just do this all the way around. I'm hitting B to bring up my selection marquee tool then A to deselect everything and there we go so you can use the B button or the C button C button you can kinda of just click on it you don't have to I call it the selection painter I'm not sure exactly exact what its precise official name is but you get the idea uh, okay so now that's all sewn around each other and that looks alright um, we can just create uh, like a little hook thing to come up out of it. Let's go to our top view and let's put another loop right here beside that one. Then we'll grab both of those and move them to where they're a little more centered up. And then let's select the face on the top of that. There, I'm going to extrude that up perfectly on the Z axis. 
And now I'm going to um, Alt H to unhide everything. Let's go to our side view and let's bring this up until we can on the Z axis until we can start bending it over the back of the bed thing there. The bed thing. So many technical terms I'm using today. Okay, so let's select all this and just move it slightly forward till it's actually up against the back of the Jeep area there, and then we'll select the wheel and the tire, the tire and the wheel, and drag that back down until it's in there a little better. Okay, so that'll work. Let's see, I think we also need to create a place for the wheel to be bolted on, so let's grab that holster thing that we made there and let's go ahead and hide the tire for now just to get it out of the way and the wheel and then we'll select in here and let's select the back part of the inside extrude that forward a little scale it on the x-axis to, to where it's a little narrower maybe extrude it just a bit on the y-axis and then grab the top of it extrude that up and this will be the plate that comes up that it can be bolted to so let's go to our side view and that's probably good let's round it out let's grab that middle part and just round that and then we'll add a loop around there to get that little sharper edged gg to slide that back up didn't have a lot of room to move my mouse when i created it so let's add another loop down here slightly above that one and maybe some loops around the edges there and oops wrong spot there we go right there okay so now if we it's like we got some weirdness coming in here so yeah also we need to add loops around the little hook thing that comes up there we go and maybe a couple wrong spot there we go right there and right there okay so that'll work okay so now if I unhide the tire you can see it now there we go and that uh, the tire needs to come forward just a bit so we can actually not have that plate coming through it and I think that'll work alright so that took a good seven minutes <laughs> we'll go ahead and hit smooth again after we select the Jeep so we get the everything that was still fasted once you create new geometry on anything that's already been smooth shaded you'll have to add the smooth shading again but no big deal added that okay now as I've been promising for a while the headlights now so let's select one of the loops there and we'll go shift s selection to or cursor to selection and it's kinda offset it's not really in the center I think we still have something else selected now huh. one would think it would be perfectly selected around that circle there but it's not so let's just um, we'll do it manually I guess we'll just come out of edit mode this is going to be a separate piece and I'm going to add a uh, an, a UV sphere right there and it's obviously way too big because it's coming out of our screen there I'm going to set the segments down to 12 the size let's make that 0.25 and that's still too big maybe 0.1 and that's almost right but the rings I don't need 16 let's go ahead and bump that down to 8 and now we'll tab into edit mode of the new headlamp. Rotate that 90 degrees on the x-axis. Maybe scale it down a little bit so we can see what we're doing a little better. And it's not going to need to rotate at all, so it doesn't matter where its pivot point is. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this while we're still in edit mode. Maybe scale it down a bit. And we'll go to our front view and hit the period button so we're lined up on it. Scale this on the y-axis a bit. There we go. Maybe drag it in. Maybe a little bit bigger, just so it kind of encompasses the weird edge that we have around the hole there. And I'm going to go ahead and add a loop right there around the middle of it. Maybe scale it down just a bit. And then add another loop here. And this is going to basically kind of be like an eyeball. We're going to have the, the headlight lamp, the lens of it, right here. But we're also going to have an inside part to where, you know, it'll where the, the bulb and things would go. So I'm going to go ahead and um, select all the rest of the front of the lamp here. There we go. 
and I'm going to hit the Y button, and that's going to separate that out. It's still part of the same mesh, but it separates it from uh, the, the back of it. So now if I move it, you can see it's disconnected. Okay, so let's go ahead and hide that, and now I'm going to select the remaining edge there. I'm going to go extrude that, extrude it down again, and we're just going to keep extruding and dragging it inwards until we have that nice concave part of our headlamp. Now this will be the part where the bulb comes out. We're not going to actually put a bulb in here unless you, excuse me, unless you want to. I'm just going to kind of put a facsimile where it kind of looks like a bulb if you glance at it, but we're not going to be looking that closely at the headlights, so we'll just kind of do like so. Maybe scale this down. Whoa, zero percent. Oopsie. Zoom in there. Scale it down. Zero percent. There we go. I just, I just, I didn't hit S first apparently, so it didn't scale it. So uh, now, right now, you can see what's happening here. I'm trying to zoom in, but it's cutting off the view. And the way we can fix that, so we can actually zoom in and look at something really closely, is to come up here on our properties panel, and under view, you can see it says clip start point zero or zero point one. And that's that's not big enough. So I'm going to say 0 0.001, and then you can see I can zoom in pretty much almost all the way in. Now, if you wanted to make that even less, all the way to zero, then 0 0.001 I guess is apparently the smallest you can go. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, right now it looks like it's just one point, but we actually have 12 vertices selected. You can see that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and merge all those at the center, and boom, it knocks that down to just one. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and unhide the glass part. Okay, maybe scale that down just a bit, drag it into what would be the chrome part. And there we go. Now you can see um, it's still two separate pieces. Once we add materials to this, we can add a, like a chrome material to the inside here and the fake bulb and then a glass material to the lens. Now. Um, one thing that we can do to make this lens look a little better is if we add a subdivision surface like we'll do in the end, it makes it a little too faceted, or I mean too smooth. I'd like it to be faceted because headlights usually have a faceted surface to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab back into edit mode and I'm going to hit the B button. And what the B, or I guess it's shift B, control B, yeah, control B. And what that does is adds a bevel to it. So it's going to add a bevel around all of those edges that are selected. So you can add just a slight small one. You can see it, it just kind of doubled them up. So if I tab out now, and even though we have our subsurf on there, it still maintains the faceted low polygon look there. So that can make it look, you know, like 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 it's made out of little glass pieces. So um, let's go ahead and make that a little smaller so it'll fit inside that frame a little better. Maybe let's turn the smooth shading on. And there's our headlight. So now we can duplicate that over, shift D, duplicate it over to fit the other one. And why not keep going? We'll, we'll have some turn signals down here. Let's go ahead and look at a reference again. Go ahead and X those out. And let's see Willie's Jeep uh, front. And you can see we have one more bulb right down there below that slightly to the front. We don't really need a hole for it. Uh, we could put one, but we don't really need one at this point, so I'm just going to scale that down. Just drag it down to there, and duplicate it over on the x-axis to over here. And let's make sure from the side view that that's still good to go. Alright, so these will have different materials than the headlights. These will have the... well, it looks transparent here, but uh, which should probably give it kind of a amberish color. Um, I don't know, maybe back then they didn't have different colored turn signals. But uh, in any case, we'll leave those as is. Maybe make them a little bigger. I'll select both of them. And then I'm going to go to the individual origins around the pivot point. So when I scale them, it doesn't... If I did it around the median point like that, it would scale them like they're on the same piece, the same, same group there. But I want to do it around the individual origin so it scales them individually like so. And we'll just drag them to fit in the space a little better. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and duplicate one of those over to the rear so we can look at um, a rear 
noise cheap rear, and we can see we have some little tail lights uh, down on the bottom corners of those. So we can copy that, put our top view, Shift D, drag that back to the end, rotate it 180 degrees, go to our side view, and it looks like it did not rotate. I must have my mouse just in the wrong spot. Okay, so our side view, maybe scale that up a bit. Let's go to our rear view now. There we go. And maybe let's make our holster for our spare tire. Uh, a little smaller so we can get that tail light up above there. So we'll select that and then Shift H to hide what's not selected. And let's we'll select the bottom of it, drag that up about to right there maybe. We'll make a, make that tail lamp a little smaller. Shift E, drag that over, and there we go. Maybe make that a tiny bit smaller, just so it's not interfering with that tail light. There we go. Okay, so that'll work. Let's go ahead and save this as part eight. Now, um, let's work on the steering wheel real quick. Let's uh, put a uh, unhide everything in edit mode of the Jeep, and let's put a, a, a couple of loops right in here, right in front of the seat, the driver seat. Drag that down, GG twice. So I'm sliding along the edge. So I'm maintaining the curve that it already has. Then we'll add another loop right there beside it. Another loop on the other side. And then we'll grab there and drag that up. So now we have a place for the steering shaft, steering column to come through. Go ahead and add a loop right there so it can be a little more rounded. Grab these guys. And then maybe a loop like so. Didn't help much. I was hoping we could square that off there a little better. I guess we'll have to do it vertically. Okay, so that'll work there. Now I'm going to put my 3D cursor in that area. So uh, select some of these points here. There we go. Shift S, cursor to selected. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I was going to make it a separate piece, but I think I'll go ahead and just uh, just add it uh, as part of the Jeep mesh. Shift A, we're going to add a cylinder like we did when we were making the wheel. Scale that way down. We're going to keep the 12 segments that we had set already, so it's no big deal. Okay. And now I'm going to, let's go ahead and uh, let's bring this out over here and extrude this up. This will be the main steering shaft like we can see in the picture, in the reference. Now we'll select the whole thing. Actually, let's go ahead and make the whole steering wheel before we rotate it. That'll make things a little easier. So let's take a look at a steering wheel. Okay, so this looks like a good reference. Looks like it just basically a very simple, uh, almost looks like a Mercedes symbol. Uh, the shaft comes up, the steering column comes up, and it connects right there. And we got the three uh, arms that come off to the circle. Okay. So let's just select this edge here, go to our side view, extrude a little bit more, scale that up some, extrude a little more, and then this will be the center part where a modern vehicle would have a horn. And tell you what, let's select all this and then Shift H to hide around it. And I'm going to select this face and this, these two adjoining faces there these two and these two. So we have our three um, arms for our steering wheel. So I'm going to hit the E to extrude and just drag my mouse uh, just a bit, about like so. Then we'll do the same thing. And actually, I accidentally clicked out. So E to extrude and then drag it to the left and it will create those arms. Then we can just scale those out. Um, right now we're still going around the individual origin. So we're going to make sure that's back to the median point. Now when we scale them out, we can get them a little smaller like so, or a little, you know, like they're supposed to. Then we can Alt-S to make them a little skinnier, like so. Okay, and maybe raise them up a bit. Okay, and now let's go ahead and put our 3D cursor right here in the middle of that, the top of that steering wheel. Looks like that got offset a bit. And we'll go Shift-S, cursor to selected, there we go. 
And this time, instead of adding a cylinder, we're going to add a torus. And that's basically like a donut shape, um, a circle, a rounded circle shape. So we we need to adjust this to have the right amount of of, of pieces there so we can fit the the rest of the steering wheel there. Major segments, I'm going to drop that down to 12. You see, it makes it just like our 12-sided cylinder. And ma minor segments, 12 is too many. I'm going to go ahead and just say 6. Okay, and then we can set the scale. There we go. The, the major radius is the outer the the outer size and the inner the minor radius is the inner size so I'm gonna make that a little bigger so it comes out actually that's a thickness I suppose so let's make that smaller not quite that small um, maybe an even point one yeah probably fine then we'll scale the whole thing down and we'll rotate it until we can well, no, that's about right because we got two faces there. So let's scale that down a little further. Maybe alt test, make it a little skinnier. There we go. Okay, so now um, let's add a loop. Or yeah, okay. I was gonna. Now nah, that adds a too sharp of an edge there. Let's undo that. Uh, let's just select the the two faces here that will be facing that one that one and that one there we go that'll be attached to the steering column arms there we go extrude that out just a bit scale it way down a bit like so and then we'll delete those faces delete these faces and that you know what that's gonna be kinda ugly I'm gonna undo this and I don't want to extrude out from the edge that'll just make things ugly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a, um, going to select these faces. Yeah, here we go. I got the good idea. Select these, all these faces that are going to be connecting to the, the main part. And you know what? I just realized we don't really need to to sew it together. We can just have these. This is not going to be deforming at all. So we can just select these edges and just scale them up until they pass through, the wheel part there. There we go. That makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Now we'll just add some extra loops around there so it doesn't taper off as much. Okay, and then maybe select these loops holding down Alt and right clicking, then Alt S to scale those down a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Now let's see, I believe the middle part is on the top. No, not necessarily, I guess. Let's see. Where's a good one that's not turned at all? Looks like the Oh, is it not an even turn? Maybe not. I don't know. We can get it arranged in there. So let's. Um, we got our steering wheel and everything selected. Let's go around our 3D cursor, which is lined up with the center of it. Go to our top view, and let's rotate that about 60 degrees. So we just rotate it 60 degrees. There we go. So that top uh, arm is facing forward. Okay. So now we can go to our side view and go ahead and rotate that down. Before we do that, let's make the size a little more proportionate. So select the, the uh, column, scale that up a bit, maybe drag it up a bit, and then select everything, rotate it, scale it down, about like so. I think our dashboard went a little lower than the one in the image, so we'll just compensate for that by putting it right below the image of the steering wheel in the in the reference, so I'm going to Alt H now, just uh, unhide everything, and go ahead and select this. And maybe go to our side view, drag it a little further down, so we're not punching ourselves in the face with it. And then maybe grab the end of it and drag that all the way down until it goes through the firewall board there. And okay, let's drag it down a little bit further. Um, Control L, and then select the wheel itself. Control L. And make sure we're coming down below the opening there in the dashboard for it. So there we go. Okay. Maybe make it a little smaller, just so. Let's go control comma, so we're around the median point. Make it a little smaller. And there we go. Okay. So we'll go ahead and set smooth shading again. So our steering wheel also has it. Now we're almost done with the modeling. Almost there. Go ahead and save this. And... Um, you know, it'd be really fast to go ahead and 
yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm sorry this one's going to take a tiny bit longer, but it's not going to take that much longer because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those headlight pieces that we made and just duplicate those, and those can be these columns. And then we'll need to do the brakes and everything. Tell you what, let's go ahead and do that in part nine, and then we can call it done with the modeling. So uh, that's going to be it for part eight. Part nine, we'll do it and get in here and do the gauges and then the pedals and, and the gear ships and things like that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in part nine.